Hi, my name is Ben. In this video, I wanted to showcase two container actors for the Cyberpunk Red Core System for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Now, there's going to be several sections below, so feel free to skip to the relevant part that's best for you. We'll be looking at creating a container actor, uh, configuring permissions on the actor sheet, looking at uh, the particular GM settings relevant for the container actor, and then we'll also be looking at a couple of examples that you could set up in the game, such as like a night market vendor, a vending machine, like a loot box sort of thing, or a loot container, and then a stash or a, a container for character storage. So with that, let's take a look. Okay, to begin this, let's go to the actors directory tab in the right hand side, click create actor. We'll set a name for this. Let's say for this one, we're gonna say an arms merchant. Uh, type we're going to set to a container and then click create it'll have the default icon it won't have anything as well but we'll be looking at all, all these settings in just a moment so for what we can do for the time being if you want to send an image that's fine so let's just go here i'll just use an example that i have in my world folder uh, let's just use an armed guard merchant click file and just for the sake of it we'll also update this in the prototype token just so the image is also going to be used when we drop the token in the scene so we'll come to world Okay, now with that, we have the arms merchant actor created, but you'll actually notice if you try to make any changes here in the GM settings um, with just the actor selected, so that doesn't mean, uh, so that means that if you don't have a token on the scene, you'll have an error that pops up. So say for example, container settings should not be made on, uh, should be made on the token, not the actor. Now that's uh, it, it, primarily because of how Foundry interprets changes between actors and tokens. So essentially what we'll be doing once we've created the base uh, actor that we want to play around with we just want to drop them onto a scene but before we do that we need to look at the very important uh part of this which is configuring permissions on the actor so what we'll do is right click the arms merchant click configure permissions and again because of how foundry interprets things we have to do things a little bit different which is that we actually have to give the arms merchant uh, actor we actually have to give players uh, owner permissions just so that they can actually see and make some modifications based on what we want to set for the uh, the container. So what we'll do is we'll select owner and we can do that for all players or you can do it on a player by player basis which we'll be looking at a little bit later for something like a container box and we'll say save changes, bring this one down to the sheet. So let's just say that we want to bring this down onto this section of this night market that we have set up here. And again, if we bring this up, we can now actually set and make changes to the GM settings box here. So with us being logged in as the GM, we're only going to be uh, able to see this section here. No one else or, or none of the other players that don't have GM settings will be able to view this box. But we can see here that we have a few different types and different items that we'll be looking at with you shortly. So to begin with this, let's add some items from a companion pack. Uh, let's do both some weapons and some ammo types, just so we can see what they look like on the character. So if we come up and bring up the weapons companion pack, let's just drop in a couple of assault rifles. For the weapons themselves, they're gonna be listed as individual items, but we'll actually see if we bring down, for example, an ammunition type. So if we bring down, let's do a few rifle types. We can actually see if we bring down more than one set of basic rifle ammunition, at the moment, this is actually gonna stack so because basic rifle ammunition is sold in lots of 10 based on the core rulebook, this also follows that sort of logic that each time you do it, it's um, sort of sold in, in that sort of context. Now let's also bring down some more just so we have a bit of variety. Wonderful. Now, if you need to quickly make an adjustment in terms of how much is available or, or the amount that's there, we could easily just click this, come to the settings tab under the amount. We could jump this up, say that we want this to be 100 just like that, uh, just in case you didn't want to, you know, continuously add stuff into the uh, character item there. Now, with this being a shop uh, without infinite stock, that means that if a player does come up and tries to purchase items from this inventory, it will take items out of it. So with that, what I'll do is I'll bring up a separate window that we have, which is our player character or our player with, you know, player permissions. And we'll actually see what they're able to see from, uh, from their perspective. Okay, I'm currently logged in as a player character, which is which we've called for this uh, context, Chase. Now this uh, character here, because we have the permission set for the arms merchant token, we'll actually see that we can see the arms merchant is listed here. And if the player character, so we are logged in as the player, actually brings up the arms merchant, 
we can actually see that they can see what is available in terms of the shop inventory. So we can see as a player that they have three assault rifles and they have different types of ammunition and there's actually a trade with option here. So because uh, we are the only actor as this player that we have owner permissions as, we only see the option to trade with ourselves or trade with the character that we have. So let's just check to make sure our character has some euro bucks that we're able to spend. So bring them up with a double left click, come over to the gear tab. We can see that I've set this character with 2000 euro bucks. So it means that they've got some ammunition, uh, got some uh, euro bucks to spend. So let's go down here, come back to the uh, arms merchant vendor. Let's say that we want to buy an assault rifle trade with Jace is selected. Hover over this one here, which is to purchase all items, which for this is fine because we'll just purchase the one assault rifle. And just like that, we've purchased an assault rifle. So if I bring up the character's inventory as well, we can see that the assault rifle has now been added and the applicable Euro bucks have now been removed from their inventory. If we want to check the ledger, we can actually see that it's going to track that as well for us, which lets us know what we've actually purchased with the Euro bucks. So that's a good way to track this as well. And then we also can say we want to purchase some ammunition, we can do that as well. Now with ammunition types as well as a couple of different other item types, you can split the purchase if you only wanted to get a certain amount. So let's say with purchasing this assault rifle, we also want to get some basic rifle ammunition, but we only wanted to get 50 of that. So if we go here, we can say purchase some items, which is essentially going to split the stack. We'll go 50. And just like that, we've now purchased 50 basic rifle ammunition and that's removed 50 from the inventory. We can do the same thing with rubber rifle, but let's say that we want to purchase all. And just like that, we've now purchased all of that ammunition um, easily. Now that works really great for vendors in a night market situation where they have limited stock. But let's say we're in a situation somewhere in say Night City where they're coming up to a vending machine that has you know basic food or drinks or something that the players can purchase repeatedly, or that there's an almost a near infinite uh, you know amount of stock that they can they can use. Um, for this uh, example, I've actually already included a another container um, actor, which is I've just called Vendor for this example, which we can see is listed here. Um, now let's bring them up here. We bring our character down just so that they're in front of them. And I'll also switch back to our game master screen just so we can see what settings we have uh, currently in place. Okay, I'm now back to our game master's screen. Uh, and if we bring up the vending machine, let's just double left click this one here. We can see that we still have this set to a shop, which means that items can be purchased, but we've actually set this to infinite. Now for this example, I've just quickly created a new item, which I've just called Nicola and then Nicola Blue. Both of them are set to an amount of one. The price is 10 euro bucks. Uh, but the player, if they decide to make a purchase, will actually be able to purchase an infinite amount so they can continue to purchase them and they'll actually be available on their inventory. So as an example, I'm just gonna switch back to our player view. So this is logged in as the player now. Bring up the vending machine. We can see that we have here, uh, trade with Jace is set as our player character. I'll just bring this over to the left and bring our character sheet up as well. Now, uh, again, as the player, we don't see the GM level options here, but we can still make the purchase. So we go, let's say we want to buy one Nicola Cola. Yep. And we can continue to purchase this indefinitely, you know, based on the amount of group bucks that we have. So let's say that they want to stock up on their energy drinks. They could buy 10 sets of Nicola, which is stacked because that's a gear item. Um, and that's also taken the amount out of the euro box. So that also works for Nicola Blue. We can continue to make that purchase and that's gonna stack that gear item for us. Now the stacking does only occur with some particular item types like ammo and gear. So you may not be able to stack things like cyberware or uh, you know some cyber decks and programs and stuff like that, but um, it's quite useful for this purpose, especially for vending machines, just so you know that you can, you know, essentially sell items indefinitely for some easy things like, um, you know, Nicola, um, you know, some weapon types as well. If you want to sell like weapons out of a vending machine, maybe some medical supplies, and you know, you can sort of use your imagination for what you want to come up with. Another example that we'll look at is what we call uh, the loot section. So let's close out of these. We'll switch back to our game master view. So now we're logged back in as the game master. And if we want to create another actor, let's just call this say a, like a, a loot storage item or, you know, just like an open chest. So we come here, we'll go, um, you know, maybe say boss chest. So we could say this is at the end of a, you know, end of a long mission or end of a long campaign. And this is something that they can take. And, you know, you may have some special items in the uh, container actor inventory that they can actually take and put onto their character. So again, what we'll do is we'll go container type, 
create the actor. I'll just quickly make sure that we set the permissions correctly. Oh, no. And what we'll do is we'll just bring them into the scene as well. Just like that. For this one, I'll just leave the default image art as is. Bring this one up. We'll set the GM settings. What we'll do is we'll say loot, which means that all items are free. So this won't invoke any Eurobuck cost or, or you know, sort of calculations uh, as it is. So we can, you know, uh, basically just have the player characters take what they want from the inventory. So with that set, what we can do is we can just quickly add in some items. So again, I'll just come back to our companion pack. Let's say that we want to add in some gear items here. Let's say that we have some fancy street drugs such as black lace, blue glass, that they're able to say, you know, pick up on the street or they're sort of able to take from a gang of boss or something like that. Um, and then we can uh, take a look at what that looks like from the player view. So with the permission set, we'll switch back to our player. So this is now logged in as our player view. If we were to say, come up to the container actor, viewing it as the player, double left click it. We can see here that we're able to see the token, we're able to see the items and we're able to take one or multiple. And the actual items look a little bit different for taking in comparison to purchasing. So with purchasing, you'll usually see a shop or you know a cart icon because this is a, a loot box or like a sort of a you know container that you're able to take some items from. The context of the situation changes. So you're able to take some or you're able to take all items. So say, you know, we got to the end of a campaign, they're able to take items out of the inventory. We could just click here to take one or more. So let's just say one. And let's just say we want to take all of the um, black lace. And just like that, we're able to use that as a loot box. And the, that's now been added to their inventory um, yeah, as applicable. All right. So for this last example, I thought I'd change things up a little bit and, and say, for an example, that we're back to our base of operations or our hideout or, you know, where the play characters are operating from. So let's say that they've returned home. They want to drop off some of the items that they collected over their mission or their campaign, and they wanted to bring them in. So for an example, let's just say that we bring down Jace's locker, which I've just created as a container actor. Let's say that we want to put this just in this corner over here for the time being. And what we could do just for this example is we just want Jace to have it set. So what we'll do is we'll go back to configure permissions. Instead of all players, let's say that we just want this to be this player, which would just be what Jace has control over. And let's say that they are the only one that has owned permissions over this. If we now come back to the token, double left click, bring this up under GM settings, what we'll do is we'll select this and we'll say stash, which is a storage container. And that's actually going to give us the flexibility, especially for our player character to both uh, take and remove items from the inventory. So that's both ways. Most of the other items are only that you're able to take items from the uh, container actor, but this actually allows you to go uh, both, you know, forwards and backwards, essentially. So what we'll do is we'll close out of that one. We'll switch back to a player character and we'll do that in just a moment. Okay. Now the player is in the scene of the base. If we come up to the, say, for example, the container item, bring this one up here. We can see again that as the player, we don't have the option to set any GM settings, but we have the trade with Jace option set. And we can see that, say, for example, Jace's locker is empty at the moment, but they want to dump some of the items that they picked up as a part of the character. So we bring this one over here, I'll put this on the left, I'll put the inventory on the right. What they can do from their character sheet, because they have ownership over this a locker, and this is set to a stash, is they can actually just drop down the items that they want. So at the moment, this is set to six items, which we can just drag down. That'll drop all six of them. But say that we wanted to keep some of these items in our inventory, what we could do as an example is split. Let's say we want to split this down the middle to five. We want to keep five items in inventory, but we want to drop five off. We could say, okay, let's drag these across. Store five of those for later. And let's say that we also want to get rid of our, um, you know, blue glass and black lace as well. Drop it and drop it. And just like that, this player character has a, you know, inventory that they can actually access and they can continue to use throughout the campaign just so they have a reference point. Now with the permissions that we've set as the GM, which I'll switch back to just now, switch back to, yep, the GM screen. Uh, because we've set the permissions just for this particular character as owner, all players is set to none. That means that only this player character will have the ability to open or modify their uh, their locker or their storage essentially. So you could do this, you can make multiple different lockers for different players of the campaign, and then each of them will have their own lockers and they can they can only access their own. So that gives you another bit of flexibility.
The last thing I wanted to look at with you today was the uh, ability to set custom features. So the ones that we've provided to you out of the box are probably going to be for most scenarios or most situations that you want. But if we come here and click custom and then go to container and let's say that we want to bring this one down, we can take a look at the options that we have. So let's bring this one up here. We can see under GM settings, if we go to custom, specify, specify your own settings, um, we have the option, are all items free, which becomes something like a um, like a loot box, if you set that one, infinite stock, which is useful for a vending machine. And you can also set player specific permissions. So again, you, know, you may want to play around with this depending on, on your needs, but you have the ability to create, uh, for the player to create items. So that means that they can bring items in uh, to delete items, which means they can remove items from the inventory or you know they can delete them entirely. Can they modify items so that they can look at a feature and they can change things? And can the player character actually move the container? So by default, they're not able to actually you know, pick up and move the container actor as it exists in the scene, but you can make that change if you want them to be able to actually pick up an item or pick up a box and actually move it around. That's just been a brief video looking at the container actors and how they're used in the Cyberpunk Red Core system. I do hope that you found this useful. If you have any feedback or recommendations for future videos on the system, please do let me know and I'll see if we can make a video just showcasing how it works. Um, as always, please feel free to uh, check out both our GitLab and our Discord if you want to contribute to the community. We'd we'll love to have you aboard.